Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. Today I'm going to introduce you to a trick I use to breathe life into a still image. Nothing helps turn a static image of a city or a panoramic view into something more lively than a flock of birds. And we can do that with After Effects pretty convincingly, provided that we don't make the birds the focus of our shot. In other words, work with them as if they were part of your background and you can have something that looks pretty real. Okay, let's just cut to the chase. Here I am in After Effects with a composition containing two layers that I made in Illustrator. The first is the silhouette of a bird's body, and the second is the silhouette of a bird's wing. Now I'm willing to bet that your first reaction is probably the same one I had while making this years ago. This will never ever work. The only person who might mistake this flat object as a bird has to be what scientists refer to as really, really dumb. But my friends, as it turns out, even if your audience can tie their own shoes or know the whole alphabet by heart, you will still be able to use this trick. And I should know since I've used it tons, and I mean tons of times in different projects. You just need to be a little creative. So let's quickly set up and animate our little friend here. First, let's make both of these layers 3D by activating their 3D layer switches. Those are the ones that look like cubes right here. Okay. Next, I'm going to make both layers partially transparent for now, just so I can see what I'm doing. Select both layers, and then hit T to reveal their opacity property. And then, set the opacity to 50%, which will make both layers 50% opaque. Okay, next, let's get this wing set up so we can have it flat properly. Let me just grab the rotation tool. Alright, if we try and rotate it now, it's rotating from the center of the wing, which isn't right. We need it to rotate from the edge here or it won't look right. And to make that happen, we need to first move the wing's anchor point from the center of the layer to the edge. Select the wing layer and choose A to reveal the anchor point property. As you can see, when you select the layer, you can see this little circle with crosshairs which marks the layer's anchor point. It's this anchor point that determines from what point a layer will transform itself. So while a layer normally scales from the center, when the anchor point is moved to a corner, the layer will now scale up from the corner instead. Moving the anchor point also affects rotation and position, as you'll see. Let's just start scrubbing the anchor Y value until the edge of our wing rests on the anchor point. As you can see, this moves the layer up, while the anchor point stays exactly where it is, and that's because the anchor point also determines a layer's position. So when you give position coordinates, regardless of where a layer appears visually, the anchor point will always be on the exact same spot. As a result, by moving the anchor point, we end up shifting the layer's visual position, but in reality, its actual position, or XYZ coordinates, stay the same. Alright, since we've inadvertently moved the layer up a bit, now we simply just have to move it back into its original visual position. So grab hold of it, move it down. Okay, there, perfect. You know what? Let's move both layers up so that the bird's body is centered to the composition. Okay, good. Now let's get the wing flapping. Select only the wing layer and then hit R to reveal the rotation property. Let's set the wing's X rotation to 45 degrees. You'll notice that our wing is cut off at the top. Don't worry about that, it won't matter in the end. Making sure we're at frame zero in the timeline, click on the X rotation stopwatch to create a keyframe. Now move down to frame four and set the X rotation to 135, which also automatically sets another rotation keyframe. Finally, at frame 9, set a third keyframe for 45 again. Let's also change all of the keyframes from linear keyframes to ease keyframes. Click on the word X rotation in the timeline, which selects all of our X rotation keyframes, and then right click on any one of the keyframes, and then from the pop up, choose Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. This will cause the wing motion to ease in and out of the most extreme parts of the motion as they would do in real life. Okay, so we've just created one wing flap cycle that we will repeat over and over. For that to happen, we have to create an expression that will loop the animation cycle. To do that, Alt-click, or if you're on a Macintosh, Option-click on the X rotation stopwatch, which adds an expression to our X rotation property. The expression currently says transform.xrotation, or it might say something different depending on which version of After Effects you're using. But either way, whatever's written there basically means X rotation equals X rotation, or rather, do whatever the X rotation keyframes say to do. Basically, this is an empty expression. 
We need to replace that expression with the expression that you're seeing here on your screen. Loop out type cycle, which means after the last keyframe, loop all keyframes using the looping method called cycle, which cycles the animation over and over again. There are actually several looping methods, but I'm not getting into them here. I want to point out that this composition is about 30 seconds long. Our final shot is going to be a lot shorter, but I'll need room to randomize things so that our flock aren't all doing the same thing. If you're not really sure what I'm talking about, don't worry, because it'll all make sense soon enough. Anyway, if we do a quick RAM preview, we can see that our bird's wing is flapping over and over again. Okay, let's add in another wing for the other side of the bird. Select the wing layer and choose Control D or Command D if you're on a Macintosh, which duplicates the layer. I'm going to move the new layer to the bottom of the stack. This doesn't really make a difference in 3D space, but I want to keep things organized for my own purposes so I don't confuse the wings. We want the new wing to flap in the opposite direction that it's flapping right now. So let's hit U to reveal all keyframes and then double click on each of the keyframes and change them from positive values to negative values with the same number. So the first keyframe will be set to negative 45 instead of 45. And the second one will be set to negative 135 instead of 135. And the last one will be set to negative 45 again. Okay, a quick RAM preview and our wings are flapping correctly. Let's just add some motion blur to make it look a little more realistic. Turn it on for all layers and also make sure that it's on for the composition as well. Finally, let's set our opacity to 100% for all layers. Select all the layers and hit T to reveal the opacity. Then, set the opacity to 100%, which, as before, changes all the layers to be completely opaque as well. OK, a quick RAM preview, and it's doing what it should. At this point, if you were to take this bird composition and throw it on top of a picture, you might get something that looks OK, but, you know, probably not. To me, this looks a bit robotic and definitely fake. But don't worry, we're by no means done. In part two of this tutorial, we're going to make this look a lot more realistic using an effect or two and an expression to give some life to our feathered friend here. Then we'll make him part of a flock. Hey, we don't want him to get lonely, right? Don't forget, you can get the files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AEPodcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.